be or not to be? That is the question. Whether it's nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against the sea of troubles, and by opposing end them, to die, to sleep, no more, and by sleep to say we end the heartache, thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to, tis consummation devoutly to be wished, to die, to sleep, to sleep perchance to dream. Aye, there's the rub, for in that sleep of death, what dreams may come when we have shuffled off this mortal coil, must give us pause. There's the respect that makes calamity of so long life. For who would bear the whips and scorns of time? The oppressor's wrong. The oppressor's wrong. The proud man's contumely. The pangs of despised love. The long delay. The insolence of office. And that spurns a patient merit of the unworthy takes. Merit of the unworthy takes when he himself might his quietest make with a bare bodkin. Might his quietest make, might his quietest make with a bare bodkin. Who would fardel bear to grunt and sweat under a weary life with the dread of something after death? the undiscovered country from whose bourne no traveler returns puzzles the well and make us rather bear those ills we have than fly to others that we know not of thus conscience does make cowards of us all thus the native hue of resolution thus the native hue of resolution, thus the native, thus the native hue, thus the native hue of resolution, and thus the native hue of resolution, and thus, thus the native hue of resolution is sicklied over the pale cast of thought. The native hue of resolution is sicklied over the pale cast of thought. An enterprise of great pitch and moment with this regard. An enterprise of great pitch and moment with this regard, their actions turn awry and lose its name of action.